NFL. No time to hang, Tim. You're either hanging in or hanging on. Because it's time for football, baby. The NFL on Fox. The Cowboys and Niners renew their storied rivalry. Is this fun or what? Out here in the Bay Area. For Dallas, it's been an up and down season. The boys have been banged up and knocked down. And the big D in Dallas has been huge. Meanwhile, for the Niners, it's no soap opera. They're just the young and priceless and flying high atop the NFC West. The Rams head down to the Falcons' nest in Atlanta. Go in. For St. Louis, Isaac's getting into the mix. But the Falcons' D's been getting busy, banging lots of sacks. The Bucks look to rebound in Indy against the Colts. Tampa's hit the skids, losing three straight. Meanwhile, the Colts hope Paul can lead them to win just in time. The Skins face the Bears in Chi-Town. Washington's won four straight against Chicago, and Leslie looks to Shepard number five. But the Bears hope the corner's been turned by an ultra back named Raymond. The Eagles and Cards duel in the sizzling hot desert. Philly knocked off the boys, and Ricky's looking to keep the NFC's top offense running strong. But hey, Arizona's got the gift to grab, with Moore and Sanders topping the NFL. Now, live from the city by the bay, four guys who admit they've left their hearts in the game. It's the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Well, as Tony Bennett's song suggests, many have left their hearts here in San Francisco. And when you talk about the heart of NFL competition, it doesn't get much better than the Dallas Cowboys battling the San Francisco 49ers. You can tell, folks, that we're live from the city by the bay as we're ready to kick off a doubleheader here on Fox. And hello again, everyone, and welcome to Fox NFL Sunday. I'm James Brown. We've got a raucous crowd here joining my partners, Ronnie Lott, Howie Long, and Terry Bradshaw. Hey, folks, Bradshaw's a little pumped up today because Louisiana what? Tuck, Louisiana, Louisiana Tech, Tech beat who? Alabama. Not Alabama. Bama. Bama. They beat wait, Bama. Wait, 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 wait. I'm telling you, the Bulldogs, 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 you got to... Villanova. Up, take notice. The Bulldogs, man, are, are, might be eligible for the Rose Bowl this what? year. What? Villanova. That's right. The Rose Bowl. That's right. The they could go there. Work. They, well, it could. Villanova beat the Rhode <laughs> Island Rams. Who cares? Wait a second. Rode Island down there in the pit? <laughs> Those 7,000 fans? Out. Well, bottom line is both of us want to schedule USC. Oh, oh man. No, don't don't go there. Don't do no, that. They really me. want to schedule Harvard. Six and one sitting atop the Ivy League. Thank you very wow. much. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. All right, folks, here's they a look at what's happening. They man. still play football there, Terry. Here's a look at what's happening around the NFL. Redskins general manager Charlie Cassidy told us he doesn't expect defensive tackle Sean Gilbert to sign this week and that the team will definitely not set him free at the end of the season. Now, Cassidy says this is the strangest holdout that he's ever Ever seen the three million dollars designated for Gilbert against the salary cap will be freed up on Tuesday and the team will use that to sign other players to contract extensions meanwhile the Green Bay Packers believe that they are close to re-signing all pro safety Leroy Butler they will pay him the three million dollar a year average that Dallas safety Darren Woodson earns which is tops in the NFL all right, now that you're not going anywhere for a while, it's time for our Snickers Fox Watch. And we return in Chicago, where Monday night, of course, the Bears rallied to beat Miami in overtime down in Miami. Today, they face the 4-4 four and four Washington Redskins. Dick Stockton is at Soldier Field with the preview. Hello, Dick. Hello, JB, and I hope you're having a good time in San Francisco. The Redskins hope to have a good time and end a two-game losing streak today against the Bears, who are still reveling over their win over Miami. Chris Zorich, one of the more popular Bears, was cut this week, and the Redskins, as you mentioned, need some help at defensive tackle. They have signed Zorich. I caught up with him when he arrived at Soldier Field before. What would be an ideal scenario for you today? Uh, well, with the opportunity I have, maybe just go out and make a couple plays so I could prove to people that uh, really have doubts about me that I can't play. And changes for the Redskins. They're delighted to get Terry Allen back at running back, but they lose big play linebacker Ken Harvey. This is a big game for both teams, Redskins and Bears. And right now, let's send you to Atlanta and Kenny Albert. Thank you very much, Dick. Welcome to Atlanta, where the 1-7 Falcons host the 2-6 Rams. Falcons quarterback Chris Chandler returns today. Chandler has started six games this year. He has finished only two. Coach Dan Reeves told us yesterday if Chandler suffers another concussion, which would be his third, that would be it for the season. Now, the problems for Rams quarterback 
Tony Banks have involved communications. The coach to quarterback radio has malfunctioned the last couple of weeks. They tested it earlier. Perfect. Everything seems to be all right. Tony Banks certainly hopes so. No problems with our communication, so let's head up to Indianapolis and check in with Kevin Harlan. Kenny, we're in the dome for the Buccaneers and the winless Indianapolis Colts. Tampa Bay for the first time all season without a share of first place in the NFC Central Division. After reeling off five consecutive wins to begin the year, they've now lost three in a row. And moments ago, I talked with Buccaneer head coach Tony Dungy. Well, we definitely have to run the ball uh, better and more often than we have the last three weeks. Uh, in Green Bay, we ran it pretty well, but the last two weeks we got away from it, and uh, we've got to get Mike Allstott and Warwick Dunn going early in the game. Controversy for the Colts. Jim Harbaugh will miss the start today because of the scuffle with Jim Kelly last week in San Diego. Paul Justin will take his place. More on the Harbaugh story later on in the pregame show. And right now, let's go back to San Francisco and J.B. Now, most of you, including those of you in New York, will see the Dallas-San Francisco game, which headlines the second half of our doubleheader here on Fox. The rest of you will see the Eagles and Cardinals battling in Tempe. As we come back here to San Francisco, you know, obviously, uh, Kevin and, and Jerry did mention about the situation involving Jim Kelly and uh, Jim Harbaugh. One of the difficulties for you ex-players is making a transition to the broadcast booth and being constructively critical about players on the field. You've been pretty critical constructively about Jeff George. Is it difficult for you guys to make that transition? I haven't been critical constructively about Jeff George. I've just been critical. <laughs> oh, you've been bad. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> And, and the only thing was, it wasn't about performance. I very seldom will ever criticize a, a, a player, but if I do, it's going to be about his performance because that's the only thing. You really, that's your job. You have to be honest. If you want to be in this business and be respected, you have to say what you feel. The thing about Jeff George, I didn't like what he did in Atlanta when he took the football, went around the stadium after Kaufman had actually had the performance of his lifetime to win it for the Raiders, threw it up, pumping his fist in the air and saying this is Jeff George's house. Well, what about I didn't that upset agree. you? Why did I, you I thought upset? it was showboating, and I don't like showboating. Mm -hmm. It's just plain and simple. That's just the way I am. And then the thing about Deion Sanders, remember when Deion Sanders took the kickoff and went on intercepted and went back and was pumping the ball in the air? I didn't like that, so I said it. So those are the end up and the and the I just don't think it's a consistent personality, but performance is really the thing we have to be careful of. That's yeah, what we I, measure them by. I agree. When you go into this business, it's very difficult because you, you did play in the league and you are being critical of players who play in the NFL. If I'm critical of a player in the NFL, it's based on film work that I've done and seeing the player perform at a lower level than he's used to playing at. I don't believe you question a player's heart. I don't believe you question a player's injury. I just think that's taboo. I welcome the opportunity of a player who disagrees with my viewpoints to sit down and look at film and break down the film that I'm being critical of him in and say, hey, if I'm wrong, I'll be the first to apologize. But if I'm not, live with it. It's the truth. No, oh, and I understand that, man. If you look like, if some guys look like steak and play like chicken, that's just, the, that's how it's how life is but you got it that's like right it. you like that but yeah. i'm gonna tell you one thing the bottom line is you got to have thin skin you can't worry about what people say you can't worry about what people think you got to go out there play your game live up to your standard you've had coaches call back and be upset with you howie also doesn't like bob mckittrick and made that point clearly you guys don't fear retaliation or thinking that you're stepping over the no, line I, there? I think as long as you're being honest up here you're fine all right sounds good You've never been critical of anybody. <laughs> I can't believe he sits up here and says, Yes, you did. I can't believe that, TV. <laughs> Sunday morning, too. I know. All right, folks, the there's plenty more coming your way. And here's a look at what else is on tap. Today on the one and only NFL. <laughs> Today on the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. When Jerry Rice went down, many thought the Niners were toast. But somebody forgot to tell Steve Young. Our Pam Oliver stops by Mr. Young's passing school to see if his crew of untested receivers is making the grade. And the great many Cowboy fans would give their team is a D, and it don't stand for Dallas. John Madden talks with Troy Aikman about the boys and whether they're ready to make one more run. Then, what's gotten into the New York Giants? Fossil Fuel. The new team and they're flying high top the NFC East. Eric Clemens gets it straight from their rookie coach Jim Fossil, who's got this young bunch dreaming and playing like veteran champs. Coming up, coming at you, the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. There's 
the snap. Williams, wide open. Oh, he blew it. Here come the team doctors. This kid is tough as nails. Real professional. Are you hurt? Yeah, I'm hurt. When people boo, it hurts my feelings. Don't you think they have a right to boo? No. The ball hit you right in the numbers. No, didn't. I don't think the quarterback likes me. Of course he likes you. The whole team likes you. Why can't he feel my pain? Post incompletion stress disorder. Not going anywhere for a while? Grab a Snickers. Hey, turn that frown upside down. There you go. And what did you do this weekend, Tommy? I have been to the edge and back. Excuse me? Introducing the Edge Pizza from Pizza Hut. Pizza is about topping. Crust is your is safety. Your safety. The Edge has no other crust. The Edge is topping right to the edge. Topping right to the edge. Take the Edge. My family let go. go of your crust, my friend. Brother, sister. I have been to the Edge and back. Join me. 16 pieces of pure toppings. Have you been to the Edge? Tonight. Find out what really happened in Agent Mulder's apartment. The truth will be exposed on the X-Files season premiere tonight on Fox. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Snickers. Not going anywhere for a while? Grab a Snickers. Hungry? Why wait? By Pizza Hut. Enjoy today's game with the Edge Pizza, new from Pizza Hut. 16 pieces of pure toppings. Have you been to the Edge? By 7-Eleven. Oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven. And by Porsche, who wish to remind you there is no substitute. Time now for a look at the Porsche quarterback report. TB, because we're in Steve Young's house, who do you like? Press well, I'll tell you, you got to look at it carefully. I, I really, you know, I think I'm going to have to go with you. Jeff George is really playing. Jeff George! Jeff George! Jeff George. Oh. There's only two places I travel where I'm hated. One of them is San Francisco and the other is in Oakland. I'm going to go with Steve Young and try to win some fans today. Boy, he's playing up to the crowd. I can't believe it. I thought he was objective. Back with more after this.